it's a collection of capability, not just what the U.S. provides, but you know, is, that's the whole reason why this uh, you know, defense contact group has come together. And I think we are doing a, uh, are doing well, the right things to provide capability to Ukraine. And uh, as each of the nations come together, um, it's a collective capability. I think is, is important, not just what the U.S. provides, but this. It's all that it comes together. And I think it's important to remember that there's 50 nations uh, that have come together in support of Ukraine, and uh, that's a pretty powerful uh, uh, group of people. And it was, you know, as President Zelensky looked at that body there and, and, uh, and, and all of these ministers of defense and chiefs of defense were still very much focused on what his needs were, I, I think it may have been uh, reassuring to him as well. So. For our final question, we'll go to Ora Lee from Iraq TV. Uh, thank you very much. I wanted to go back to the capability uh, coalitions that you've mentioned earlier. Um, what are those going to actually change when it comes to support to Ukraine, but also to replenishing the stockpiles of the Allies? Because that's also a problem in making sure that there will be support in the long term. And second question, if I may, more specifically on the winter months coming ahead, um, do you believe that it is possible for Ukraine to both be prepared for protection of its in critical infrastructure, fight off Russian uh, the Russians off its territory, and also for NATO allies not to sacrifice their defense preparedness? Thank you. So, how does this change our provision of support, I think is your first question, uh, regarding the uh, capability uh, coalitions? What, what this is doing is, uh, is laying the groundwork to begin to build the future force capability for, for Ukraine. So if we have an armor coalition, for example, uh, wh whoever is leading that coalition uh, will uh, we'll work with others uh, to uh, assemble the capability, the armor capability that Ukraine, we believe that Ukraine will need to defend at, uh, its, uh, its sovereign territory in the future and deter aggression in the future. So if you look at each of the capability coalitions, um, they're, they're all uh, focused on a specific uh, type of uh, 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 combat uh, capability, uh, armor, artillery, uh, air force. There'll be a naval component that will be uh, focused on uh, building out a, a naval capability. IT, an IT coalition that will help uh, Ukraine uh, strengthen its IT capabilities and, and be able to defend its networks uh, going forward. So. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you.
good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. It is my pleasure to introduce Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin III and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General C.Q. Brown, Jr. The Secretary and the Chairman will have some brief opening comments, and then we'll have time to take just a few questions. Please note I will be moderating those questions. Uh, and due to our time constraints, I just ask you to please limit your follow-ups to give your colleagues a chance to ask their questions. And with that, Mr. Secretary. Thanks, Pat. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Sorry about the delay. It was a busy day, uh, as you know, and uh, the Chairman and I were, uh, were on a conference call there that went, went a bit long. Uh, but uh, we just uh, held another highly successful meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. But before I turn to that, I want to take a few moments to discuss the vicious assault by Hamas on the state of Israel. The more we learn about these sickening atrocities, the worse it gets. Hamas deliberately targeted civilians and massacred, massacred them just because they are Jews. Hamas has again killed innocent Americans and civilians from many other countries. And Hamas has abducted entirely innocent civilians. So the United States continues to stand firm with Israel and the Israeli people. The USS Gerald R. Ford Strike Group has now arrived in the Eastern Mediterranean. We've also moved to extend U.S. Air Force fighter squadrons in the region. And the Department of Defense stands fully ready to deploy additional assets if necessary. As President Biden has said, for any country, for any organization, for anyone thinking about trying to take advantage of the agony in Israel, to try to widen this conflict or to try to spill more blood, we have just one word. Don't. Additional U.S. military aid to Israel started flowing in yesterday, including key munitions. And we'll be providing more uh, Iron Dome interceptors so that Israel can protect its citizens and cities. And we'll continue to ensure that Israel has what it needs to keep itself and its citizens safe. And like any other country, Israel has the right to defend itself. As the President says, Israel has a duty to defend itself. And make no, no mistake, the United States will remain able to project power and to direct resources to tackle crises in multiple theaters. So we will stand firmly with Israel as we continue to support Ukraine. So let me turn to today's agenda. This was the 16th time that I have convened the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. And I'm pleased that we were joined in person today by President Zelensky of Ukraine. We're also joined by our outstanding new chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General C.Q. Brown. He will be an invaluable partner for the Ukrainian people. Now, President Zelensky's team provided us with a valuable update on Ukraine's current counteroffensive. Ukraine's brave troops continue to make steady progress. Yet as winter approaches, Ukrainians are bracing for Russia to again target Ukraine's energy grid and civilian infrastructure. And as Putin becomes more cruel, the Ukrainians become more determined. So we will continue to get them the systems that they need. If you look at the ground-based air defense systems that this coalition has surged into Ukraine, those systems are saving countless civilian lives from Russia's bombardments. And that just underscores this contact group's commitment to meeting Ukraine's urgent near-term requirements. But today we also talked about helping Ukraine to defend itself for the long haul and to deter aggression for decades to come. So members of this contact group are organizing into what we call capability coalitions. And that's going to make our security assistance more nimble and help to secure Ukraine's future.